A few days ago, Google released Gemini 3, and it's already rolling out everywhere. Search, the Gemini app, AI Studio, you name it. Google calls it a big step towards AGI, but what does that actually mean for your business? Can you use it to save time, make more money, or run more efficiently? Absolutely, and today I will show you exactly how. We look at real business use cases, from quick ways that you can try right now, to deeper workflows that drive serious efficiency. Before we jump into the demos, Here's a 30 second version of what Gemini 3 actually is. Gemini 3 is Google's most advanced AI model ever and the biggest jump they've made so far. If you've used Gemini 2.5 earlier this year, that version was already decent. Better reasoning, better coding, more consistent chain of thought. But Gemini 3 is in a completely different league. On various benchmark tests, including one where the model runs an entire simulated vending machine business for a year, Gemini 3 dramatically outperforms every previous model including that of competitors. So the algorithms I'm about to show you aren't small. They are the kind of improvements that can change how you actually use AI in your business or day-to-day -day work. All right, so let's start with the most visual change, image generation. Gemini 3's image generation took a massive jump. It's finally at the level where you can use it for real business content. Thumbnails, ads, product mockups, you know, all of that and a lot more. The image generation model has a code name. It's called Nano Banana Pro or Gemini 3 Pro Image and you can use it right inside the Gemini app. Just add the Create Images tool and select Thinking from the dropdown. And now let me show you what you can actually do. If you ever try creating ads, flyers, social media posts with AI, then you already know the struggle. The text got misspelled very easily and it tended to have all sorts of design problems. That is basically gone. Gemini 3 now produces clean, readable, and correctly spelled text right inside images. Here's a simple example. I just type a prompt like this. It gives me a perfect short result with correctly spelled text right inside the image. Here's another prompt where I ask it for a fully designed packaging label with multi-line custom text. Just look at the details, the layout, the spacing, there's just not a single typo or mistake on this picture. Or here's a mock-up for Sauce Analytics dashboard. Just look at that clean UI, clean labels, exactly what earlier models have struggled with. One of the biggest upgrades is reasoning with an image generation. This means you can give it a long multi-step prompt describing an entire product scene, lightning, materials, props, angles, and it will follow all of it. Here's an example. I won't read it out, it's too boring, but let's see what it can do with it. All right, so that's the output. Let me download it. Oh my God, what the heck is this? I'm not a photographer, but um, this is insane. I guess 99% of people would not be able to tell it apart from a real professional photo. This is a huge upgrade for anyone creating brand characters, storyboards, or recurring visuals. You can now upload a reference image and Gemini 3 will keep the character consistent across multiple images, different poses, outfits, settings, whatever you want. Here's my reference image. Notice the file name reference image.jpg. I will drag it into the prompt box and run this prompt and see what it does. There you have it, same character. Let's try another example. Same identity, completely consistent. All right, how about one last example just to make sure. Pretty insane, isn't it? Look at how realistic it is. It even has some shadow in the background, if you can see here. All right, so that's about images. Let's move on. You may have noticed that when we build a prompt, we combine both text and image. That might seem small, but that's actually one of the biggest upgrades in Gemini 3. Google calls Gemini 3 the best multimodal model in the world, meaning it can understand text, images, documents, tables, PDFs, screenshots, all at the same time. And when you combine that with its massive context window, things start to get really interesting. Because now you're not just using AI to create content, you're using it to reason about your business. This is what moves small teams from AI makes stuff to AI makes decisions, or at least it helps you to make decisions. To give you some perspective, Gemini 3 has a 1 million token context window. That's around three or 4,000 pages of text. That's enough to drop an entire business plan, financial reports, presentations, and still ask for insights, improvements, risks, or inconsistencies. Let me show you how powerful this is. I grabbed McDonald's annual report. That's an 82 pages long boring text. Then I added a sneaky little paragraph inside the liquidity and ease of cash section. I renamed the whole file to businessplan.pdf. Then I took this business plan and uploaded it into Gemini and asked, do you see any major issues with this plan? 
And there you go, risk number one, it does not think buying every employee a new iPhone and tripling their salary is a great idea. It's probably not a shocker, what could be is that it goes into detail and it explains exactly what's wrong with this approach, pinpoints any contradictions, and it gives us a detailed analysis of what could go wrong. No hallucinating straight from the document, as you can see from the references. And because Gemini 3 is fully multimodal, you're not limited to one file. All right, so here I have a folder with mixed files, images of receipts like this one, PDF invoices like this one, and Excel document with some cost data in it. I will highlight them all, drag them into Gemini, and just ask, give me cost insights. It thinks for a moment, and here we go. Totals, breakdowns, deep dive analysis, and expense breakdowns, and also strategic recommendations, all formatted clearly and business read. You can upload up to 10 files at a time, so if you have your invoices across many PDFs, you will need to consolidate them first, unless you're using Google Workspaces. Then here's a helpful shortcut. Go to Google Drive and create a new folder, call it invoices. And here, just go and grab your invoices. You can grab more than 10 um, and upload them here. So here I have 70. Then I'll come back to Gemini and with the add symbol, I can reference workspace. And I will say from Google Drive, can you just pick all the invoices from the invoices folder and give me an analysis? All right, so now you can see that it picked up 30 documents that's actually less than what I have here. So there is some limitations with this approach, but for everyday tasks, it can be useful. You can create different folders for different batches of invoices and then do your analysis that way. Now let's talk scale. I have a folder here with a thousand sample invoices. And doing these manually would obviously take forever. So I wrote a tiny script that automatically processes each PDF and exports the results as a CSV. Let me run it. And there it is. Now I can come here and drop that CSV into Gemini and ask for trends, cost anomalies, vendor spikes, you know, anything. Pretty nice. All right. Found some anomalies and it explains what is going on here in detail. Now, the best thing is this entire pipeline can be automated. You can have a system that automatically processes new invoices in batches, runs analysis, and emails you weekly summaries or even daily. If you want me to build that full automation end-to-end -end and walk you through it in another video, then let me know in a comment. All right, so we've covered a lot so far, so let me finish with something fun. How ridiculously fast you can build prototypes with Gemini 3. I'm heading over to astudio.google.com, and here I'm gonna ask, can you build me a website based on this sketch? And I'm uploading a picture of an actual pencil sketch I made on paper right here at my desk. It's a simple landing page for an e-commerce store selling handmade soaps. Let's click build. And voila, there you go. Now it didn't get the product images right, but honestly, that doesn't really matter. You can clearly see the product the grid, the layout, the structure, and the placeholders where the images should go. If I want, I can just replace the images. I can go here and search for the product grid. You can see these links. I can just go and replace them manually. I can come here and say copy link and then go back to Google AI Studio do it like this. If I come back now, it should work. And there you have it. Then I could go and change the other images as well, but you do not have to touch the code. You can come here and talk to the AI. You can ask for all sorts of improvements. Please change the size and go to something else, for example, and then it will probably change this next to the logo to something else. There you go. It also comes up with all sorts of suggestions regarding what to do next. So once you are happy with your creation, you can export it to GitHub, download the app or even deploy it in production to Google Cloud, if that's what you wish to do. Right, so instead of spending hours, you can go from a raw sketch to a working prototype in minutes and go from there. Thank you for watching. This is it for this video. If you are interested in AI and what it can do for your business, then make sure to follow my channel. I will post a lot more videos and it will help you supercharge your processes and save you a lot of time and money.